Hi, this is Mark Levy, your sourdough simpleton, once again back with another recipe for us to try to make together. Today's recipe is another discard recipe, which is to say you use your discard starter, or you can use fresh starter if you like, but this is designed to be able to be one of those recipes where when you have that discard, you know what to do with it, here's something which you can do with it. And this is going to be a sourdough pizza crust. And we're going to go ahead and make a pizza and bake it up in the oven after we make the crust. So the first thing, of course, we need to do is get our ingredients together. In this bowl, I have about two and a half cups or roughly 298 grams of King Arthur all-purpose unbleached flour. And we're going to add to that our starter. This is one cup or 227 grams of a, you know, kind of medium active starter. And then we're going to add uh, about 113 grams or half a cup of lukewarm water. Now, the question always is, what exactly is lukewarm water? Well, the old joke is it looks warm to me, but in truth, lukewarm water should be somewhere between 105 and 110 degrees. So that's what this is. And I'm actually going to pour it into my starter cup just to help to get rid of some more of the starter, to get some of the rest of the starter out of the cup. That worked. And then we're going to add a little bit of salt. This is one teaspoon or six grams of non-iodized salt. And you may call this a cheat, but this recipe uses a little bit of yeast. This is a half a teaspoon, one and a half grams, if you can measure it, of instant yeast, the kind that comes in a packet or a, or a jar. And that's it. We're going to put this into the mixer, and we're going to mix it all for about seven minutes until we have a nice dough. So I'm going to let this mix. A little slower. I'm going to let this mix and not bore you with it, but we'll come back in a few minutes and see how it's coming, how it's mixing up together. Well, through the magic of video, this mix has been going for about seven, seven and eight minutes. And we take a look now, you see that the dough has all formed a nice dough ball and the sides of the bowl are clean, which means it's time to take it out and let it rise. So here we have our nice little dough ball in there. I'm going to just take this dough ball out. I'm going to put it into a bowl, which has been lightly oiled. Flip it over to oil, make sure the top is oiled. We're going to cover this with some plastic wrap and leave it alone for about two to three hours until it's about doubled in size. Then we make the pizza. We'll see you then. One. Well, it's been a few hours now. The dough has risen nicely. I think you can appreciate that it's bigger than it was. So what we're going to do is stretch it out a bit. Now, the, the way this recipe is written originally, it's for two 11-inch pizzas, uh, or one, like, oh, 14 or 16-inch pizza. So we're going to see if we can get one nice-sized pizza out of this, because... I don't really want to make two pizzas out of this. So we're going to take the dough and put some bench flour down. Do a little bit of kneading and smoothing of it. Nice soft dough. You can appreciate that. And it should stretch out very nicely. Yeah. Now, if you can't stretch a pizza by throwing it up in the air, one way to try and get it into a decent circle is to push it into a circle with your fingertips and then grab the edge and pull it all the way around. So if you give it, give it a pull, give it a pull, give it a pull, like that, you're going to basically do, do, do the same stretching job you would if you threw it up in the air, but without having to worry about catching it which I don't do very well, quite frankly. And you can put it over your hands and give it a little stretch like this. 
which will also help to stretch the pizza out. This dough is very resilient. It does not uh, want to tear. It's not making the best circle right now in the world, but it will. And what I'm headed for is approximately a 14 or 15 inch circle. Okie dokie. And I'm going to build it, I'm going to build the pizza on my peel. Now, there are many ways of preventing a pizza from sticking to the pizza stone or the peel. A lot of people will use cornmeal, which is really a very nice way to do it, but it's messy. And my wife gets upset if the cornmeal goes into the oven and then have to clean it up, and that's, that's a whole different story. So, much as with sourdough, which you can bake a bread on a piece of parchment paper, I found that if you use a piece of parchment paper on your peel, you get a very nice result with that. The, the uh, parchment paper just slides right off the peel onto the pizza stone. You can cook it on the, on the uh, parchment paper, and there's no mess. So what we have here is a very nice size pizza. Dough feels very nice. It's a nice, soft, um, easily formed dough. And as you can see, we, we came out to a very nice size pizza on this peel. We're going to sauce it. And this is a very nice homemade sauce that my wife makes. I guess if you ask me, I'll give you the recipe, but you're going to have to write me a letter and ask me for it. Well, not a letter, but you know, an email or leave something in the comments and we'll see if I can convince her to give out the recipe. Neither she nor I like a heavily sauced pizza. So I'm saucing this kind of light. The directions from King David suggest to, after you sauce it, to put it into the oven to partially bake before you put the cheese on it. It's a good idea. I've done that. But we're going to bake this on a stone. The stone is a blistering 500 degrees or 550 degrees right now. So it's going to cook the crust very quickly. So at that point, we can go ahead and put the cheese on this and not have to worry about that. That's about what she likes. And we'll go ahead and put some plenty of mozzarella on this. I'm going to go ahead and use about eight ounces of mozzarella on this to, to fully cover the pizza. And that's it, just a plain cheese pizza. Could put some mushrooms or something to make her happy, but I'm not going to do that right now. Actually, I don't even have any. Okay. From here, we're going to take it into the oven. So, I will walk over to the oven and put that on. I'll let you see that. And it will not take long for this to bake at all. So I'll see you with the oven in just a second. So here we have the pizza ready for the oven. And as I said, a blistering hot oven in here, which right after we put it in, we're going to turn the oven down to about 400 degrees. And we'll let that go for, my head's cut off. We'll let that go for about, oh, seven minutes or so and see what happens. Be right back. Well, I reset the camera so now you can actually see me. Let's take out this pizza. The uh, parchment paper makes this very easy to do, by the way. 
let's have a look. Come with me. Because here is some kind of beautiful pizza from a sourdough crust. And I think that's just gorgeous. Well, we're going to cut it up and eat it now. So you'll pardon me if I don't uh, invite you to the party. But this is how you make a pizza with a sourdough crust using a discard sourdough starter. Be with us next time on the uh, Sourdough Simpleton. We'll find some more recipes to make just for you and me. Bye-bye.